Google Ads already offers a variety of targeting options for display, video, and discovery campaigns. Now these in-market and affinity audiences used to have custom options that we used to be able to create. Well, those were combined a few years ago into custom segments. This allows you to get a little bit more specific if you're not finding the in-market or affinity options that you really wanted to use to try to reach your target audience. So in this video, we will show you where to find custom segments and how to create your own. We will show you the options and settings within a custom segment, and then we'll talk about a few options that we like to use for custom segments in our own client accounts. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. The first thing we need to cover is where to find the custom segment section within Google Ads. And if you're fairly new to Google Ads, custom segments used to be called custom audiences. And custom audiences used to be split into two categories, custom intent audiences and custom affinity audiences. But a while ago, Google combined them together. So it's gone through several changes over the years. But when we're talking about audiences, we have to go to the audience section within Google Ads. And audiences will live in your tools and settings. And here we see audience manager. By default, Google lands us on the your data segments. And right next to it, we see custom segments. Now these were created for previous videos and you can look at the creation data on them. They're all pretty old. So I'm going to pretend these aren't around. So let's go to the blue plus button and then we can start creating a new one to get an understanding of what you can do with custom segments. Now, in my opinion, I wish these two sections were flipped because I usually name my custom segment based upon which option I am choosing here down below. So the first one that's already selected is creating a custom segment from people with any of these interests or purchase intentions. This will always be the default option. So you can go in here and start typing in keywords, or if you have a list of keywords, you can copy the whole list and paste them in here. And then you get some basic demographic information off to the right hand side. I highly recommend adding several other keywords when building custom segments. When the original custom intent audiences were around, Google's original help page for custom intent audiences mentioned that you should try to have at least 50 different keywords within your custom audience. And depending on how specific your industry is, that could be tough. But I do try to give Google as many signals as possible to try to hone in on a specific intent, even if they're not called intent anymore. Because with the default option that we have here, Google says, you're trying to describe your ideal customer's interests or products that they're looking to actively buy or possibly actively researching. From the signals that we're entering into this custom segment with this default setting, Google says they will try to show ads to reach people with interests or purchase intentions based upon the marketing objective you have selected for the campaign and possibly your bid strategy. So if you have an objective that's focused on sales or conversions, Maybe having keywords that are definitely more product focused and not just overall running and having a lot more signals than just the six search terms that I put within here would be much more beneficial for the goal of what you want to use the custom intent audience for. But then we do see the other option of people who searched for any of these terms on Google. And when I'm building these types of custom segments out, I do like to call it out within my custom segment name. It helps me differentiate the settings. So when I know I'm adding it to a campaign or ad group, I get a better understanding of which one is performing. And as we see up here in this small little line that I'm highlighting right now, these audiences are only for campaigns running on Google properties. So at the time I'm recording this video, that will be a variety of YouTube campaigns as well as discovery campaigns, which now includes Gmail, but those are going to start go away in favor of the new demand gen campaign type. I shouldn't say go away. They're just going to be rolled in into a newer campaign format. Now, another thing I remember with this custom segment setting, going back to what the original custom intent audience said, is that we can't take this as an exact match search term that someone actually typed in. And we shouldn't think that's an option anymore in this day and age in Google Ads. So the original custom intent audience, when this setting was first introduced, said these terms that you entered in will be looked at from a broad match standpoint. So when you're creating this custom segment, 
Think about how broad match works for your search campaigns if you're entering certain keywords here that you're also using within your search campaigns. Do you need to stick with something that's much more specific, maybe calling out specific products instead of just overall track shoes, running shoes? Or maybe that's just another idea for you to test for custom segments. But when we're thinking about YouTube campaigns, discovery campaigns, and we understand the placements of those, yes, we can do remarketing. But if you're trying to use these custom segments, essentially building your own in-market or affinity audiences, then most likely you're using this for some sort of awareness. And if I'm looking at a more top of funnel type campaign, I'm okay with it expanding a little bit of reach. These are not my search campaigns. If for whatever reason you use one of these Google properties audiences in campaigns that don't show up on Google properties, or they have settings now where you can't turn off properties or placements outside of the Google network, like many of the YouTube campaigns now force you to be on the display network, then this type of custom segment will default to the interest and purchase intentions. So for the past several years, I've always used the second option for every YouTube and discovery campaign I've created that wanted to use custom segments. And then I've pretty much used this top one just for display campaigns. But while creating this custom segment, we've just been focused on keywords. But there are a couple more options you can use while creating your custom segment. And they're kind of hidden in these blue links down below. We see that there's an option to enter in specific URLs that you think your target audience or a potential customer may like to visit. Couple things. This does not mean that you're placing ads on these websites. This is not placement targeting. If you're looking to do that, watch this updated video on how placement targeting works now within Google Ads. Again, not an ad placement setting. Second, this is not remarketing based upon those URLs. You cannot do that. That is not possible unless your Google tag is on these websites. So when you are entering URLs, Google will show your ads to people who browse similar websites to the URLs that you are entering. So let me just paste in a few URLs here. If I scroll down a little bit, I do want to call out two things. The first thing is before I clicked on the link, this statement was still there. It said you're expanding the segment. And when we go up here, it says, or people who browse websites similar to. So we're not combining these into one super specific audience here. The more we add, we'll grow the audience that you're creating. People interested in these keywords or visit websites like these or people who use apps like these. So yes, apps. The third option that you can use to build a custom segment. So for here, you can look for apps on the Google Play Store that you think your target audience might use. Now, normally, I don't like app placements when running YouTube or display ads. However, there are a lot of clients that we work for that I know their target audience would use very specific apps. Again, this is not a placement tool. However, there are very specific apps out there where if I know someone is visiting these handful of apps, they are our target market. And I would love to get a video in front of them. So in this case, I just typed in the name of the app, found it pretty easily, and now it's added to the custom segment. Let me just do one more, and I can keep going on and on. There are several more I can add, but pretty sure you get the point. Going back up top, I know I said running shoe terms. I don't feel like changing the name, but I understand it's gonna be all three of them, and I'm not gonna use this anyway. This is just a demo. So if we save it, there's my custom segment. Google's showing me it's not in use. If I did decide to use it, there would be another row here calling out the audiences that are in certain campaigns or ad groups. You can see that back in the your data segments one. See, they're gonna show me certain ones that are in use. The same thing would happen with your custom segments. At any point, you could highlight over your custom segment, click on edit, and there's everything here. We can add or remove, that's totally fine. But the same thing would happen if you just click on the name of the audience anyway. Next, I want to give you some ideas of certain custom segments you may want to consider creating. And the first option is the easiest. Going back up to tools and settings, let's go into Keyword Planner. If we look at new keywords, I'm going to paste in some options. Yes, these are the same options I use for the custom segments. Get results. And then I'm getting plenty of options that I may want to choose for creating a custom segment if I want to keep it more focused just on the keywords. And if it's not Google property type search terms, understand then these are going to be interest or behaviors based upon the keywords I'm inputting into the custom segment. And already here, this gives me a variety of options because in the six terms that I provided within Keyword Planner, they are higher level. They are more broad. I'm not really focusing on types or brand names. So maybe I want to create one custom segment for these overall higher generic terms. But then if we look at keyword ideas, maybe I would want to create another custom segment focused on specific brand names. Different scenario for another option to consider. Let's pretend I am a running shoe brand. Maybe all of these are my competitors. 
we're doing this in several accounts that we're managing right now, where we have a different custom segment for every single competitor, finding all the competitor keywords for each one, and luckily they're all large enough to justify having their own custom segment. Sometimes we've created a custom segment just with competitor URLs, not even using keywords at all. People who have visited websites like all of my competitors. Same thing with the apps. Look at the keywords that you are already running within your search campaigns. Maybe pull out your best converting options and creating a custom segment off of that. If you're in an industry where you don't get a lot of conversions, then maybe look at overall engagement. It's going to be depending on your goals. And then, of course, as we know, since match types don't work as well as they used to, if we X out of this, head to your search term reports. For some of you right now, search terms still might live under keywords. But for most people, it's transitioning under insights and reports. And there we go, search terms. I'm not going to click on it. But see what people are actually searching that leads to high engagement or conversions. And you can use this from your search or shopping campaigns. Create custom segments from those. You want to get more converting customers, don't you? Well, then use the terms that are already converting for you. So then we probably want to start adding these to certain campaigns, right? Well, that's easy enough to do. I'm just going to click one option here. This is a YouTube campaign. I'll go into the actual ad group. And then we can click on audiences. This one doesn't have any audience segments set up, so we can add audience segments. If we're going in an existing ad group, head on over to browse. And then I got to scroll down at the bottom. You will see custom segments. And there is our new Google Properties running shoes terms. Of course, we added something. I'm not going to click on audience expansion. Just click save. If we go to show table, no matter how many audience segments that you add, whether they're custom segments or not, they will show here. You can start reviewing performance. And you will see when you're creating your ad group, if it is a brand new campaign, that same audience section will be there. We can just click on browse, find custom segments, and then add it to your new ad group. So then for an example of launching a campaign going after all of my competitors and I have a different custom segment for each of my competitor, I have no problem keeping it all within the same ad group initially. I can come back to this view, modify my columns, which you can change that over here, add in the columns and the metrics that are important to you to gauge success. Then I could see if certain competitor custom segments aren't working well, I can remove them. Or maybe other ones are working very well that we need to start splitting some of these segments into their own ad groups or campaigns for better budget control. But my biggest recommendation on testing out custom segments is honestly just testing a variety of different combinations. I know the one example I showed you in this video is taking all three options within a custom segment to really have a bigger reach. That's great if you have a larger budget, but you may want to test one that is just URLs, that is just apps, just keywords. And if you find success in one, maybe you just need to come up with different iterations of each option. It's really what it comes down to, starting with the options you think work best and testing them within your different campaigns. If you have any other questions on how custom segments work within Google Ads, or if you want to share some ideas that you found work really well that I did not cover in this video, please let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.